Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're doing my nails. As you can see here, they are very grown out. <laughs> These ones I had on for five weeks, I believe, um, which is a very long time for me. I usually swap them out, I wanna say every three weeks, three, four weeks, maybe. I don't know. I like these ones though. Um, and I was very impressed because it was only the day before filming this, one stone popped out. But that's it. Otherwise they were good. Uh, but as you can see, these are my natural nails with an overlay on them. So they are long. Um, this is much longer than I ever usually have them, but we are just embracing it. Um, but they're gonna they're gonna go a little bit shorter than there. Uh, so I'm just using my Erica's ATA T-Rex bit to file off what's going on there, but still leave my overlay untouched or like as untouched as one gets. And then I'm just going to go in and do some prep work. So starting by pushing my cuticles back gently. I've actually been really good about cuticle oil. I preach it, so I gotta do it. Uh, cuticle oil makes a huge difference in prep. I had zero lifting on any of my uh, nails, which I credit greatly to cuticle oil. Um, and then my cuticles were actually in really great shape as well. So that makes prep a lot easier. Um, so push my cuticles back and now I'm going in with another Erica's ATA bit, which I will have linked down below. And this is to not only push my cuticles back a little bit more, but exfoliate any of the dead um, nail stuff, <laughs> dead cuticle off of my nail plate. Uh, and then I'm just gonna go in and trim the dead skin that's hanging on there. You wanna be careful, only trim the dead stuff, make sure you're not cutting live skin um, because you can accidentally nip someone, there's blood, there's guts, the whole gross thing, you don't want any of that. So just trim what's dead and kind of like the white bit, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to go around and do all that to each one of my nails. And now I'm going in with my Diami file. I'm starting by just kind of sorting out the length, figuring out what length I want them, and then getting all of the nails to the right length before I start shaping. They're not gonna be square, but I just want to make sure we're all at the same length before I start shaping. It just makes my life a little bit easier. Then I'm gonna go in and start shaping my nails. We're going for a similar shape as I had before, so kind of like an almondy situation. Um, I shape now, but then I also touch up the shape again once I have uh, filled my nails. Um, but I am looking at my nail from all different angles to make sure that the shape is even because sometimes you look at it one way and it looks great and then you flip the hand over you look at the other way and it's totally crooked <laughs> so to avoid that look at your nails from all different angles and I'm going in with uh, my eval and my sanding band I have it on the lowest setting right now I have it on one and I'm just lightly buffing over my natural nail with very little pressure you don't want to go too hard on this because you don't actually want to damage the natural nail you just want a light buff um, so I'm going ahead and doing that, and then after that I'm going to actually speed up the e-file with the same sanding band, um, probably somewhere between 5 and 10 RPMs, anywhere in between there, and then that's going to help me get off any of the excess gel that I missed um, when I was doing the initial file off, as well as kind of help smooth everything out. Um, I go around the edges as well to make sure that the gel is flush to the nail because that'll just make my my feel a little bit nicer um this is also very satisfying because then the nails are like really smooth and even after which i really like after that's all done and i've used the dust brush i'm going in with a little wipe with a mix of acetone and alcohol and wiping down my nails to dehydrate and then i'm going in with the izemi neo base in the medium viscosity one of my favorite base coats as of late i've been using it a ton and i'm going to apply a thin layer to all of my nails I'll usually just apply it to a couple nails at a time, flash cure, and then do the rest of the nails. So here I'm going to do my thumb and my index, flash cure, and then move on to the rest. Then I'm going in with my Izemi Resin. This is the version number one. I love this product. I swear to God, I sing its praises every single video. I really, really, really am a huge fan of this product. Um, so I'm just using a slip layer and then going back in with a dollop of the gel and 
working it down the nail. Because it had been a while, I am doing a bit more, I'm kind of rebalancing the nails, making sure the structure's in the right place so it's not just a backfill. Um, there's a little bit more work to it, but this gel is amazing. It's so easy to work with. If you're um, new to nails or if you just, you do overlays and stuff like that, I highly recommend checking out Izemi's base products. They are fabulous. And I'll have everything linked down below too. Now usually I am at a frame while I'm doing this, so I'm giving you three nails today. I'm showing you three nails because lots of time you don't get any because I just can't keep my hand in, in the shot. Also, I am a brand ambassador with Sweetie Nail Supply. Uh, you can use code Rebecca for 10% off for your Sweetie Nail Supply order. That's where I get all my eyes at me stuff. Um, now I'm going in, I am just refining my nails after having filled them. Um, the nice thing about the Izemi product is it doesn't actually need to, like it's such a smooth product. I don't know how to describe this without it, like you just feeling it yourself if you're applying on nails. It's such a smooth product, it doesn't need too much refining, but I do start by going down the side walls, making sure they're straight and then kind of blending those into the rest of the top. Again, checking your nails from all angles is super important to make sure that nothing's lumpy and bumpy and your um, apex is in the right spot. And then also make sure to blend the cuticle area into the nail so you don't have that little ridge there because that can cause lifting too if it's too um, chunky, too step-like. Now I don't know why I always forget to film me buffing. After I file over the nails I always buff over the nails. Um, I just use a light buffer and smooth everything out um, and then wipe it down obviously get rid of the dust. But now I'm going in with the Gel Bottles Jet Black Gel Polish. I'm going to apply two thin coats of that. Apply one coat, cure, apply the next coat. You know the drill, regular gel application. Um, yeah. And on my right hand, I'm actually using the Gel Bottles Eau Naturelle. Again, my clients have been loving this. I've been loving this shade lately. So I've been really going through it. I'm gonna apply two thin coats of this. And then once I've applied two thin coats of that and everything's cured, I'm gonna go in with my uh, I Zemi Neo Base Gel in the thinner viscosity and I'm going to apply a thin layer of that to all my nails. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I want to buff over the surface afterwards to prep for chrome application. Um, there's a few ways that you can apply chrome without it sticking but, but I find buffing the surface works well. Um, some people use matte coat but I still find that sometimes matte coat can be a little bit, a little bit tacky enough where the chrome still sticks. So I prefer to use this method where you buff over the top. Now I'm going in with the Vala Chew It Gel. Okay, is it Chew It or is it Tune It? Because there's some writing some places that say Tune It, like the bottle, and then other <laughs> places they say Chew It. So I'm not really sure. This is just the clear. Um, it's non-wipe, which is great for applying chrome. So I'm using it to apply swirls in the center of my nails. And I know it's hard to see because we're working on uh, a black base here, but I'm going in and applying swirls down the center and curing each one at a time. And then I'm going in with my Magpie Silver Chrome in Diana and applying a layer over top of that. Now I do have a confession to make. You can see that there's chrome in between the swirls. Some of it kind of sticks there. And I have to say, it's because my fiance brought me McDonald's part way through after I had applied this Chew It gel um, and I don't think I dehydrated in the swirls well enough afterwards. <laughs> so I'm blaming McDonald's. <laughs> I'm gonna write a letter. Um, but I did the um, Chew It gel on the nude hand afterwards, after the McDonald's, and I had no, no issues. So that's that. It's fine. We'll pretend it's not there. Now I'm going to use my favorite product for chrome. 
um, it's the Young Nails Gloss Gel, which is a top coat and like a hard gel situation. Um, it really, apply a thick layer if you're doing 3D chrome, but it really locks in chrome. I've had people come back six week, weeks later with no chipped or worn down chrome. So we love it, but you also have to do it on a builder base or like a gel extension or something like that. Otherwise it'll crack on a natural nail man manicure. And there we have it, my cute little spirally chromey set. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below and let me know what kind of videos you want to see from me in the future. See you later.